looking at this year's race, your cycling partner, Annika Lankvat, she you were saying she arrived on a Wednesday. So how much training have you guys done together? What uh, is this year's course looking like? Well, the last training we've done together was basically the first set week last year in, um, in, in Switzerland. Um, but otherwise, we, we don't actually train together. I mean, she lives in Denmark. Um, actually, now it's the first time that she comes a little bit earlier before the Cape Epic, so we can actually do some riding together. Um, really looking forward to that. We're going to race a road, um, a road race, the Spirit of Good Hope, just to yeah, see a little bit, to see how the shape is of each of us. Um, and then when the race comes, I mean, we've done, fortunately, quite a lot of racing mm. together, so we, we know each other quite well already. And this year's course, I mean, how, how different is it to, to last year? So just in numbers, it's a bit shorter and a bit more climbing. Um, and I think looking at the stage venues, there's quite a lot of single track around the towns that we're heading towards. And they also said it's quite a lot of single trail that we're going to um, go ride. And that's actually quite nice. I think it's really cool that there's a bit more entertainment in the racing uh, and not just boring gravel roads. So look, looking forward to that. And I think it actually suits us as well. We both actually quite good technical riders in comparison to, to other ladies teams. So. You've got s obviously some Swiss titles under your belt. You mentioned the Swiss Epic. What is it about the Cape Epic that you love? What do you love about riding in South Africa? The Cape, uh, the Swiss Epic in comparison, you know, it's a lot of climbing mm. and some really, really cool single trails going down. But to get to that single trail, you climb up uh, like a thousand, a thousand five hundred meters even. And that's just, I mean, that's really long, you know, to, to get to that really fun section. <laughs> While in, in the Cape Epic, it's, it, it always changes so many different um, terrains and different trails and cheap tracks and rocks and everything. So. It's it's much more varied and really keeps you focused all the time, so you don't actually have a lot of time to to, to let your mind go away and and daydream a little bit. You really have to stay focused all the time, and that's actually quite nice because then you, yeah, mm -hmm. don't get bored. <laughs> well, James, your first epic this year. Um, let's just say hypothetically that you win it. Um, would that the waiting of winning an epic be greater or less than winning? You know, they say at the Cape Epic you need a year, or at least a year of experience before you even in for a podium shot. So mm -hmm. we're wild cards, I guess, this year. Um, I'm riding with a quite an exciting young partner called Howard Grott, American yeah, US national champ, who's um, done very well at Marathon Worlds, which which is generally a good grade for for yeah. how you're going to go at the Epic. Um, yeah, to compare the two, this at this stage of my career seems a bit hypothetical <laughs> <laughs> to say, but. Um, I'm looking forward to, to giving it to giving it everything without any pressure. And I think uh, if I look at my career, that's where I've done best, where you, you take things seriously, but you hold it lightly. It's, it's important, but we realize we are outside outside hopes, especially for the overall. Um, we'll be looking to make more of a dent on certain stages, particularly the opening prologue around ECT. Um, that's generally quite exciting with live TV and, and you know interest at an all-time high in the event. So I'd yeah, I'd say keep your eyes peeled and you never know what we're going to do. I mean, we're not even sure <laughs> at this stage. And looking ahead to the Olympics, just explain the sort of the, the format. Mm. Obviously, like we said earlier, very different mm. uh, races. You know, this mm. sort of multi-stage racing to cross-country mm. short mm. course, which is your specialty. Mm. So the Olympics is um, generally a 90. It's based on um, cross-country, which is very different from marathon. Mm. Cross country is generally on a four to six kilometer track, which is quite technical and very spectator friendly. So you can stay in one part and watch most of the race happen around you. Almost like an extended BMX track, which um, you do laps of. And a lap generally is between 11 and sort of 19 minutes, depending on the course and where you are in the world. Um, the total time is about as I said, 90 minutes. And it's really exciting because you, you almost line up Formula One style. So that that race for the whole shot and the first single track is always super chaotic. If you you can you can't win the race there, but you certainly can lose it. And there's always you know adrenaline and nerves and everything at, at an all-time high, and it creates for you know super high spectator value. Where in a marathon race, generally guys will take it a little easier out the start um, and then sort of ramp it up towards the end after three or four hours, and you're sort of in the middle of nowhere and heading back to the start-finish area where in a cross-country race you'll come through the start-finish area 
and get literally second to second splits. Um, and you can see the guys up the road. It's very much like Formula One compared to Dakar Rally. It's two different versions of, of the same beautiful sport. Yeah, and I believe you're quite uh, analytical in your, your training and your racing. Can mm. you just sort of elaborate on that? So cycling seems like quite a simple sport, but because um, that's what I was going to say. I mean, for, mm. for, for us, it's you know, it's riding a bike. Yeah. <laughs> so the attraction to cycling is that that it's incredibly mentally stimulating. You're always constantly gauging and reading terrain and making micro adjustments based on what you're seeing all the time, and almost the mental stimulation and kind of the concentration that you go through in an event sort of keeps you going back for more. You know, every every stage of the epic will have a different part and every lap on a cross country course you sort of think how can I do an obstacle slightly better or where can I find an inside line or you're trying to read someone else's body dynamics and, and the way they're pedaling and, and sort of planning your strategy according to what you're seeing and what you're experiencing around you. So um, yeah and then and then all outside of the racing you're always drawing out the essential parts of the racing to try and understand how you can replicate it better in training and, and prepare your body for what it's about to experience because I guess you're always on the limit um, at races and, and you constantly redefining that limit in training makes it slightly easier when everyone else is over the limit at a race and you're sort of on the limit, then that's where the magic happens, I suppose.